Welcome to Shape by Faith with your host, Teresa Rowe. To find out more about Shape by Faith and Teresa Rowe, please visit shapebyfaith.com or visit the YouTube channel, Facebook, or Instagram. And now, here is Teresa Rowe. Welcome to Shape by Faith, where we shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. I am excited about my guest today, as I'm always excited. I love hearing people's stories and how God is using them. So one of those people that God divinely connected me with through a mutual friend is Loretta Edson. Is that how you say your last name, Loretta? Yes, it is. Okay. Loretta Edson, you love writing romantic suspense and I love reading romantic suspense. Um, she's completed three full length novels and three short novels, none of which are published, but a big but she received her first publishing contract in april of this year of 21 with love inspired for the inspirational mountain rescue collection she has multiple short stories published in anthologies four of which are in the guidepost series extraordinary answer to prayer and she has several others which we will get into later in the interview but loretta thank you so much for being a guest on shape by faith Oh, thank you for allowing me to be here. Absolutely. Okay, so I love our listening audience to hear the background um, of our guests. So I want to ask you, what or who inspired you to write? Well, I have to say, as a Christian, God is my inspiration. Because without him, I have no reason to write. Mm -hmm. I've heard it said, I've heard it said that some writers begin their writing journey after suffering heartbreaking situations in their lives, which sadly that happens to be my story. Mm. When my youngest, when my youngest son committed a crime that landed him in prison for 10 years, I wrote a hundred pages about my disappointment, my heartbreak and my pain. My writing was terrible, but this was where God picked me up from my despair and inspired me to write stories where my characters must trust God to get them through life's challenges and dangers. Oh, that is so good. You know, Loretta, gosh, I can relate to that. I definitely can relate to your story. I, I've had similar experience with, with my twin sons, not as long in prison, um, but writing kind of soothes the soul. And I bet you're a great writer. I bet you were great back then. <laughs> you're too well, hard on yourself. <laughs> I sent it in uh, for a contest. Well, yeah, for a contest. And um, they sent me a letter back and said, you might need to learn how to write. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, okay. So it was at this point that I enrolled in Jerry Jenkins Christian Writers Guild, their four-year writing classes. And that's oh. where I Yeah, that's where my real pursuit of writing novels began. Okay, okay. When you talk about a novel, like in your bio, you you have three full-length novels and three short novels. So can you tell me the difference? And I know one's longer than the other, but (laughs) what's a short novel? What's a full-length novel? The short novels range from 45 to 65,000 words, uh, depending on the publishing company. Um, and then your full length novels range from um, like 85,000 words to 100,000 words. Writing novels is measured by the number of words and not the number of pages. Okay. So that's a lot of writing. Okay. <laughs> so, and we're going to talk about um, your books and, and the book deal that you have. So how long, let's just say if you're practicing writing, how long would it take you to write a short novel? A short novel, it, you know, if you, if you stay with it all day long, uh, you could write a short novel in a month's time. Some people type it really fast mm-hmm. and they can do it in a matter of a week, maybe. Wow. And some people are slow. Um, I'm a little slower. So it takes me probably three, four weeks to write a short novel. Probably take me a lot longer. That's okay though. You know, we're all (laughs) unique and different. You know, there's a group of readers out there and I'm one of those who love and appreciate clean reading. Um, You know, I, I love the romantic suspense books because they're free of all the junk. Right. Um, so there's a really, there's a really unique, you know, niche for that clean writing. So what is your style when it comes to the romantic suspense? What kind of style do you have? My 
my style, well, I like the blow them up, shoot them up, all that. <laughs> That kind. And my husband is a retired police captain. So my stories normally involve the police and undercover agents, FBI and ATF. Oh, that is awesome. You have a resource right there close to you. I do. How nice is that? My husband would love your books. He is (laughs) all about blow them up, shoot them up. Okay. (laughs) He loves that. And I love that it's clean. Um, Okay. So we're going to get into that as well. Um, but how does God inspire you as you're writing? Like, do you, does he inspire you with the characters before you write while you're writing or how does that all happen? Well, a lot of authors outline their plots before they ever get started. Uh, me, I'm what's called a pantser. What's I that? Sit and write, I sit and write <laughs> by the seat of my pants. <laughs> Gotcha. I like it. It's outlines, but um, it's funny because I can be immersed, immersed in a story and typing as fast as I can when suddenly an idea or a twist pops in my head. Mm-hmm. And at those times I go running into the living room and I tell my husband what's about to happen. And of course he says, so how's that going to happen? And my response is, I don't know. I'll tell you when it happens. But it's these wow moments that pop into my head that I know I'm doing what God wants me to do. And he's given me the inspiration to get the job done. I love that. You know, he gives you creative ideas. Right. And I think there's so many people that don't realize that God actually does that um, with each individual as we seek him, that those things that pop in our head, a lot of times they're from him, you know, right. those those things. So, all right, you've won a lot of awards for your writings. Okay. So you've won second place in the 2021 Blue Ridge Mountains Christian Writers Conference. And we could go on and on. Uh, There's a lot of awards that you've won. Um, I would love to hear like how you won those awards. Tell us about some of the writings that you have won awards for and how did all that take place? I mean, what do you do Enter a contest or what do you do? Um, yes, I enter contest and, um, entering contest is really one of the best ways to get feedback on your stories and to get, uh, edits. Uh, it helps you to learn how to write better. You know, it may not feel good for somebody to tell you that this isn't done right, but when they explain to you how it's done, then, um, it makes your writing better. Mm -hmm. But um, I know like Fatal Assignment is my the first novel I ever wrote. And it's part of a trilogy called Impending Judgment. And uh, it won first place um, and then in a one contest and then second place in several others. And, and it's just about two undercover agents that come together to expose an illegal weapons ring. Oh. So and then the second novel in that series is called Breathing Shadows. And um, that one won first place in a contest and second in others as well. And this is where the heroine is stalked and threatened and abducted while an ATF agent struggles to protect her. Oh, wow. Okay. So those that you just mentioned, Loretta, can we find those somewhere? Can we purchase them or are they out there? Yes. Actually, none of them have been published. They're, yeah. they're sitting safely in my little file folder on my computer. <laughs> but you have won awards for them. They should be out and about. <laughs> I have. Oh, I'm still praying for those. <laughs> okay, Lord, uh, let those be released. Uh, yes, praying for a publishing contract for you for those. My husband would love those. I would too. We, lo- we love, like I said, reading, clean reading and yes. romantic suspense and Yeah. Okay. So as far as entering your contest, do you actually edit your work before you send it in, Loretta? Do you have someone help you with that or what do you do? Well, I belong to a critique group, actually two different ones. And um, I send my work chapter by chapter to my critique group. And it's very beneficial because I see mistakes. You generally don't see your own mistakes. You can Mm -hmm. read other people's material and you can see theirs. Right. But you can't see your own. So it's very, very beneficial to have a critique group um, look over your work. Okay. Well, let's take a really quick break here. And when we come back, 
We're going to hear more from Loretta Edson on romantic suspense. So everyone stay tuned for more Shape by Faith coming up next. Welcome back to Shape by Faith, where we shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. My guest today is author Loretta Edson. She loves writing romantic suspense. And let's talk about that. Um, Loretta, what's the most important thing a new author should know about writing romantic suspense? And any tips you want to give them? There is a lot to know about writing, period. Uh, And writing romantic suspense, I think, one of the number one things is you have to capture the reader's attention right off, uh, which is called a hook. Mm-hmm. And uh, you keep them guessing. You never want to give away who the villain is until until close to the end. And you've got to build the tension and keep the, the stakes high and make it believable. Do you take, okay, people that you know in your own life experience, do you take some of their stories or maybe how they are and then kind of interweave that into a story? I like reading other romantic suspense stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you get the novels in the same genre that you're writing in, it helps you to better equip yourself and to know how to uh, format and how to arrange your scenes. Mm-hmm. So, um But like people, you know, do you ever use their character or their personality, maybe in one of your characters? Uh, I do. (laughs) I do. But um, when it comes to that, I try to generally, um, I try to blend like three or four different people's personalities. So that if I focus on, I don't want one person, if they read, if they know me and they read my book and they're they like, can't say, you're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. What do you enjoy most about writing romantic suspense? Oh, I love, like I said earlier, I love the blow them up, shoot them up, but I love the fast paced action, the field with suspense, with a touch of romance and keeping my characters guessing as to whether they can forgive where they're going to trust the Lord and heal their, their broken past. Mm -hmm. I like putting that together. How important is it for you to keep everything you write clean and Christian and Christ focused? And is is that difficult too? I'm sorry, Loretta. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Um, For me, uh, clean writing comes from a heart that's renewed by Christ. Mm-hmm. Anyone can write a clean novel, but for a Christian, there's an inspirational depth or thread in a book written by someone who has a relationship with the Lord. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures is Psalms 51:10, where it says, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. So maintaining a daily quiet time with the Lord makes it easier to stay on track, know God's voice and write clean. Mm-hmm. Of course, you know, I do write romantic suspense where there are good guys, bad guys, stalkers and killers. And yep, there's a dead body somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but there's always a happy ending and the good guy wins and gets the girl. <laughs> well, that sounds good. OK, so let's talk about Loretta when you first started writing. And you mentioned that, you know, in the first segment about you know, that you sent your writing in and you kind of got a rejection letter in a nice way. So how do you handle rejection? Does that bother you? In the beginning, it did. Mm -hmm. Uh, When I first started out, I mean, you know, sometimes you just want to cry. Because when you write something and you send it out, you're putting something personal, something that's yours. It's your baby. Mm -hmm. You're putting it out there. And when somebody rejects it it's it's like a punch in the gut but um as jerry jenkins taught us at uh in his classes you've got to develop thick skin for that because they're not rejecting you they're rejecting the story Mm -hmm. and so it's even though it's personal for you the story just needs work and so it was hard at first and sometimes you know i would just push away from my computer uh walk away go take a walk um just chill out for a while and then take a deep breath and come back and see what I did wrong. So it it takes some getting used to. Nobody likes rejection, 
but right. um, but you stick with it and the persistence and you learn how to handle that. That's good. So do you have a favorite author in this genre or in another genre that you really enjoy reading? I have several. <laughs> okay, let's hear them. <clears throat> let's see. I have, um, there's Diane Mills, Lynette Eason, Patricia Bradley, Darlene Turner, um, Dana Lynn, uh, Virginia Vaughn, um, and others, <laughs> Shannon okay. Redman and Sammy Abram. And that's a, that's a great list. So are they all in the romantic suspense genre or are they, yes. they write different? Yes, they are. Okay. All right. So when you're reading, I, I've read a lot of Patricia Bradley's. I think she's an excellent author. Um, I love the, I love her style and I love a lot of different authors styles. So how do you develop your own style? I mean, does that just come natural for you or through going through this, the Jerry Jenkins school, did that help you? I think it, the style is kind of the same as your voice, developing Mm -hmm. your voice in your writing. Um, So once you get to writing, I think your voice comes just naturally comes out. Uh, It's the way you see things and the way you do things, uh, the way you portray a person. Uh, It comes out naturally in just your own personality Mm -hmm. onto the paper. Right. So what was your inspiration for your love inspired three books? Tell us about that. Well, uh, I've got persistent protector and betrayed trust. And my inspiration there. Um, I really wanted to show the reader that putting faith in God can make a way where there appears to be no way. And God gives wisdom when you ask. So the villains don't get away and love abounds and there's always a happy ending. But um, my inspiration for the third one, which is unlikely witness, actually is my mom. That's still a work in progress that I'm uh, finishing up. My mom passed away with Alzheimer's and uh, my heroine my heroine's mother in this novel is in a nursing home with Alzheimer's, and uh, she gives away uh, clues to the identity of the killer. Mm. That's good. That's really good. I'm still finishing up on that. Okay, so when will these books be released? Do you know? My one contract right now. <laughs> um, will Congratulations, be by the way. Thank you. And you know, what's so funny is I've been writing for 10 years. And um, of course, I did a lot of caregiving with my parents and both parents are deceased now. But um, my first contract came on April Fool's Day. Oh, my goodness. Seriously? I I seriously, I said, God really has a sense of humor. (laughs) He does. Well, you won't forget that date, will you? That's right. I won't. Oh, (laughs) my my, gosh. Yeah, but my book will be released next September 2022, and it's titled Pursued in the Wilderness. Pursued in the Wilderness. Okay. So can we purchase that next year um, anywhere, Amazon or anywhere like that? Amazon, Barnes & Noble, um, Target, Walmart, uh, pretty much anywhere books are sold. Can we talk about the publishing process real quick? Sure. Um, Okay. So to get a book published, I know people can self-publish a book for sure, but to get a publisher interested, is there, you know, what's the process involved with that? What do, what do you do? That's a lengthy question. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) We've only got one minute left. Oh, that's okay. Generally, you um, you find the publishing company. If you have an agent, which I do have an agent, and she's wonderful. It's Tamala Hancock Murray with the Steve Lobby Agency. Mm-hmm. And um, I will contact, I will send her um, a proposal, and mm-hmm. she will send it to the um, publishers. And, of course, they will look at it, and they will determine whether uh, – they can use it or it's something that they're looking for. And then it goes from there. Okay. So 10 years of writing, you've got your first contract and God is so good, isn't he? Absolutely. He is always so good. We're going to take another break right here. And when we come back, we're going to hear more from Loretta Edson. So everyone stay tuned. 
Welcome back to Shape by Faith, where we shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. Okay, so I'm talking to Loretta Edson. She loves writing romantic suspense. She just got her first writing contract, and her books will be released in September 2022. Is that correct, Loretta? That is correct. Pursued in the Wilderness. Um, let's talk about you developing your characters. Is there a process you go through, or what do you do? Well, first, um, I Google baby names and find a name that the meaning fits the personality of the character I'm building. I love that. Oh, I love that. I really do. And then secondly, um, I search for pictures of men and women, and I select one that closely matches the description that I've envisioned in my mind. This way, I'm consistent with hair color, eye color, and facial features. Um, The hardest part is completing a character profile, which is basically birthing an imaginary person. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Deciding on a birth date, birth place. Uh, parents, siblings, if any, height, weight, education, job, likes, dislikes, hobbies, etc. cetera. Um, so that's a lot to fill out in a character profile. But I also go to the Myers-Briggs personality test online. Uh-huh. And, and I complete the questionnaire, which gives me feedback of my character's personality, quirks, weaknesses, and strengths. So that's how I develop my characters. Wow. That's, you know, I hadn't really thought about that. I mean, that's pretty incredible. You've got to do a lot of research before you even begin, right? Yes. Writing takes a lot more than just sitting down and writing. Oh, my gosh. I might just have two characters. (laughs) 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 Oh, gosh. I hadn't even thought about that. Okay. So let's talk about dialogue. Um, Is that easy for you or is it a challenge to come up with it? I love writing dialogue, but, you know, it can be tricky. I know back in 2012, I attended a residency for writers where Jerry Jenkins, of course, told me he told me he could tell that my novel was written by a female. (laughs) (laughs) Is that bad? Is that a bad thing? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I I guess if you're writing a man character, it is bad. Oh, gotcha. Because men men don't talk in complete sentences. You know, they say, yep, nope, right, got it, things like that. And us women, we like to give all the details and, you know, every step of what took place. Yes. So, true. but writing dialogue is fun for me. Okay. So, um, all right. I want to talk about an, an inspirational story that you would like to share, however God leads you. Okay. Um, I think the one that really stands out in my mind is when I was really having doubts about Uh, did God really call me to write after 10 years of not getting a contract? And, you know, was I wasting my time and had I wasted, you know, was I wasting life by just spending time at my computer writing? So early one morning, as I sat on the airplane, I I was going to the Blue Ridge Mountain Christian Writers Conference. And I was pretty down at that time. Uh, I don't even know why I went to the conference, but I leaned my head against the window and I watched the clouds float by. And I uttered an apologetic prayer. I don't like asking God for signs, Mm -hmm. but I I uttered this apologetic prayer under my breath and just asked God for a small sign of confirmation that I was doing what he called me to do. Um, The years of trying and trying to land a publishing contract, but instead receiving rejection after rejection just was taking its toll on me. So I had no clue why I'd invested in this conference other than the fact that I just needed encouragement. Mm -hmm. So once I arrived there, um, they had the classes lined up and I tried to select what I wanted to go to. And I just had no uh, desire to go to them. I procrastinated. So I lingered around the coffee shop and As I was hanging around the coffee shop, different ladies passing by and some would stop occasionally and talk. And I found myself praying with with them about their their struggles with life and with their writing. Um, And in praying with them later, I found myself my my spirits were lifted. And then um, on awards night, which is always the last night of the conference, I had entered the foundations contest but had no expectancy of winning anything. In fact, 
my attention that night was on, on another girl who I knew had entered the contest. And I was watching her because I wanted to see her reaction when they called her name. Oh, wow. And I was shocked beyond belief when my name echoed through the auditorium as the first place winner in romantic suspense. Um, I was caught off guard and knocked my glasses off my face <laughs> as I jumped from my seat to go receive my award. I was so <laughs> nervous. <laughs> oh my gosh. That I said, was- oh my God. He just blew my mind and, and used me in ways I hadn't anticipated at that conference. And he answered my menial prayer. So I know without a doubt now that I'm where I'm supposed to be and doing what he's called me to do. Absolutely. I love that story. Thank you so much for sharing it. You know, God gave you, absolutely. He gave you confirmation. He cares about every detail of you, just like he cares about every detail of of what we care about. And we serve such an awesome God. Well, Loretta, our time is out. I've really enjoyed our conversation. Um, Where can people find you? They can find me on Facebook at um, Loretta.Edson.7. I don't know why we have the seven, but dot seven and uh, Twitter. I'm also on uh, Instagram and all the other social media platforms. Okay. Well, it's been really enjoyable getting to know you and listening to your story, but thank you so much, Loretta, for being a guest. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day. Bye. Thank you for listening to Shape by Faith with Teresa Rowe. Remember to visit shapebyfaith.com to find out more about workouts, the TV show, podcasts, blogs, Shape by Faith products, and much more.